and welcome to this video on drawing trajectory for force or wells to shooting of 3D objects in Unity. This will be a two part tutorial. In this one, I will show how to draw the movement trajectory for force or wells to base shooting using the line renderer. In the next one, I will explain how to cut the trajectory with object collision so that it will not pass through the objects and shorten the trajectory to the point that it will not show the ball trajectory to the player. In this example, I will be shooting the object with force that was implemented in drag and shoot videos that will be linked in the description. But I will try to explain it so that if you have an object that you are shooting with force or velocity of the rigid body, you will be able to apply the approach explained here to your project. Let me give you a summary of what we should do to draw the trajectory that will be explained in this and the next video. First, we transform force vector to velocity vector. From there on, using the velocity vector, we calculate flight duration. From duration steps, we calculate points the objects will be on after the duration pass. Using these points, a line under is composed to show the wall path. Using ray casting, we make trajectory not pass through objects. And lastly, we cut the trajectory so that the player will aim but do not exactly see where the shoot object will land making it a little bit more challenging. In this video, I will walk you through the draw trajectory behavior. We can put this to any game object we would like. As an extra, we should create a line renderer game object from right click on hierarchy, effects and select line. In line renderer, select use world space. Change it as other default values, however you like, and drop it as reference on the behavior. Later, we will need to set line segment count. That will be the number of points the trajectory will be created of. Higher the number of segments, more on point our trajectory seems. And this is how we set it up in the editor. Let's continue from the code. At the start we have variables. Line renderer, the line renderer we use to draw the trajectory. Line segment count, number of segments and the points on the line. And line points, a list to store positions of calculated points on the trajectory. As with any implementation and tutorial, you can change how you approach the logic explained here. I had used a simple singleton declaration, getting the reference of the line renderer outside. If any of these is not preferable for you, you're free to change it up. With all these, here is our update trajectory function that does all the work. It requires three information in the form of variables. Force vector. Force vector that will be used if the object is strong. If you throw the object with velocity, you can omit the velocity calculation step and get that information instead. Rigid body. Rigid body reference of the object that we are throwing. And lastly, starting point. Position of the object that will follow the trajectory. Before continuing with the trajectory, let me show you where I am calling this method. Drag and shoot is the script that shoots the game object. You can make your call in a similar behavior of yours. Here while dragging the mouse, the trajectory changes. So we make the call in on mouse drag event using force vector calculated that will be applied when the mouse is released. The position of the object and the rigid body reference. There is also a function for hiding the trajectory for the object when it is shot which is called on mouse release hide line. You can use it to hide line or don't use and let the trajectory stay on the scene. This was how we can use it so let's go back to drawing the trajectory. First, we calculate velocity, which is force vector multiplied with delta time over object mass. And why is that? Because from Newton's one of the laws, force equals mass times acceleration. Acceleration is change in velocity over time that can be calculated by average velocity over time step, which is delta time and is time that fixed delta time in unity. From there, we move places of the variables and get phi velocity equals force time delta time over mass. Mass value is also taken from the rigid body. Here both force and velocity are three dimensional that is separate for each axis. So if I say velocity.y, I mean velocity vector applied in the y direction of the object. That we use to calculate the flight duration. The equations are from hyperphysics page. Flight duration t range equals two times magnitude of velocity y vector over gravity constant, which is y value of physics.gravity in unity. To calculate the points on the trajectory, I will be using timestamps for each time segment, step time. That is calculated by dividing flight duration to 
line segment count. With these calculations, we are ready to draw the trajectory. But first, we should clear the previously calculated values from line points. Then, we will iterate for each point. Here, I will be calculating the position of the object with distance equals velocity times time passed for x and z axes. But for y axes, we need to go back to physics equations and apply the corresponding one so that the gravity factor is also applied to our calculations. At first, we calculate the time passed to get that timestamp by multiplying step time with i, the index of the timestamp we are making calculations for. Using this time passed value, we straightforwardly calculate change in x and z axes by velocity times time. For y, we apply motion equation, velocity times time minus 1 over 2 times gravity factor times time passed square. Now we calculate the movement vector. To move from that distance from the starting point, we subtract it from the starting point. Places of the movement vectors or the subtracting or adding could change with your way of calculating the force or velocity vector or the position of the object and the movement direction. If you see unexpected movement, I suggest playing around adding or subtracting the movement vector from the starting point in different combinations. Then the calculated position is added to line point. When all the points are calculated, we fill the line renderer using them. Setting position count to count of point in the line points. Then using set positions, we give the information of the positions of the points on the line renderer composite trajectory path. This was how we create the trajectory path. To hide it in the moments needed, we can simply set position count of the line renderer to zero. This was it for this part of the tutorial. Now we can draw the trajectory for movement affected from the gravity with no direct forces. Next time it will include cutting the trajectory path with collision as well as showing only a part of the trajectory. I had started to work on this because there were requests on drag and shoot video on drawing trajectory and I wanted to see if I could do it. I really like applying physics or math equations in game development. For using physics equations, this is not the only way you can draw the trajectory. The code always changed the more I worked on it. So it can also change some parts and have the same results. I can say this was very interesting to work on. If you have any questions or suggestions or feedback, let me know in the comments. If you like this video and want to see similar ones, you can give this one a like and subscribe for the future ones. I will hope to see you in the next explorations and bye bye.